humans, I'm Mr. King. Experimental technique. So first, filtration. It is used to separate the solid from solution. Okay, you see, followed by the drawings, and you need to know how to label as well. See, you need filter funnel, filter paper, and beaker. Okay, remember the solid they obtain after filtration it is called residue. Okay, the liquid they obtain it is called filtrate. Okay, so next one, simple distillation. It is used to separate solvent from solution. And the solvent it is always water. So which also means in the exam, whenever you see the question asking you how to obtain water H2O from a solution, it is always simple distillation. Okay, see, followed by the drawing. So you see, you need to heat the conical flask. Okay, and then you see, you have this condenser. Okay, if you notice, right, you see, on the condenser itself, there are two openings. Remember, it is for the entry of cold water. Remember, cold water always enters from the bottom and goes out from the top. Remember, okay, the direction of the water flow is always against the direction of gravity. Okay, ah. Okay, next, evaporation and crystallization. So basically, both evaporation and crystallization, okay, they are used to separate the soluble solid from the solution. Okay, see, look at evaporation. So you need a evaporating dish to carry out evaporation. Okay, whereas for crystallization, okay, you need one extra step. We have to heat the filtrate until crystallization point. Okay, remember, crystallization point is the point where crystal starts to form. All right. Okay, so one more thing before you proceed, remember filtration. Okay, every time after you carry out filtration, okay, always followed by two standard steps. Okay, you have to rinse the residue with distilled water. Okay, this is to wash away all the soluble impurities. And then followed by drying the residue with filter paper. Okay, remember. Alright, okay, next. Fractional distillation. Okay, it is used to separate liquid from each other. Okay, based on different boiling point. Okay, so basically, okay, the setup for fraction distillation is quite similar with simple distillation. It is just that there is this one extra tool. Okay, so and this is what we call fractionating column. Okay, basically, it is to separate the gases based on different boiling point. All right. Okay, and lastly, chromatography. It is used to purify substance. So to carry out chromatography first, we need a piece of chromatography paper. Okay, remember on the paper, okay, we have to draw a baseline. Okay, and we need to draw it with pencil. Why is it pencil? Remember, okay, this is because pencil it is insoluble in the solvent. Okay, remember we cannot use pen to draw the baseline because the ink from the pen it is soluble. Okay, which eventually will affect the result. Okay, then we put the paper into a container, and then we add in solvent. Okay, remember the solvent level it has to be below the baseline. Okay, why this is to prevent the sample on the baseline from getting dissolved by the solvent. All right. Okay, and then we put samples on the baseline. Then we cover the container. Okay, this is to prevent the evaporation of uh, solvent. Okay, and then you see chromatography reaction takes place. Okay, it will produce spot. Okay, the spot is going upwards. Okay, due to diffusion. Okay, remember the distance traveled by the solvent it is so called solvent front. Okay, and one more thing. Okay, not all sample they produce color spot. So some sample they produce colorless spot which we cannot observe with our naked eyes. So therefore we need something to locate all this colorless spot. And it is what we call locating agent. So examples of locating agent is called mean hydrine. So basically by spraying the locating agent on the paper, it will turn the colorless spot to become colored. Okay, to make the colorless spot to become visible. Okay, then next, how do you look for the RF value? Okay, it is the distance traveled by the component over the distance by solvent front. See like example given here. Okay, like Y over X. Okay, next, FAQ. So how to test if a sample is pure or not? Remember, so in order to test for the purities of a substance, we always test by checking the melting point, boiling point. Okay, why? Remember, all pure substances that have sharp melting point and boiling point.
Alright, thanks. Remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel. See you again. Bye.